Hello and welcome to chapter 4. The problem we're going to be doing here is problem number 5. However, I will be talking a little bit about problem number 1 because conditional probability is extremely important in statistics. So here we are in the usual homepage, chapter 4. We'll go ahead and go. Let it serve up the content. And here we are, problem one. I do want to look at this conditional probability just briefly. So here's one A, find the probability that the company's stock is moderate to high given that the firm is an aerospace company. This is conditional probability because you're trying to find the probability that the company's stock is moderate to high risk conditioned on the firm being an aerospace company. In other words, we don't care about the food rail retailers here. We just care about the aerospace companies. So we only pay attention to that first row because we're given the firm is an aerospace company. So now, what's the probability that the company stock is moderate to high risk? It's 15 divided by 38. 15 divided by 15 plus 23. And that's the key with conditional probability, is it restricts your reality, what we statisticians would call sample space, from everything in the problem, specifically aerospace company and food retailer, to just a portion of that, specifically for A, aerospace company. Conditional probability is a way of dealing with additional information, and it allows you to alter your probability estimates based on that additional information. Conditional probability is extremely important to understand and to calculate. So that was problem one. And so onward to five. Here's question five. It's another conditional probability problem. Three data entry specialists enter requisitions into a computer. So that frames the question. Specialist one processes 42% of the requisitions, specialist 2, 39%, and specialist 3, 19%. Notice that all three of those numbers add up to 100%, which means that there's only three specialists available. The proportions of incorrectly entered requisitions by data entry specialists 1, 2, and 3 are 3%, 4%, and 3% respectively. Now let's interpret what those numbers, 3%, 4%, and 3%, actually mean in terms of probability terminology. It means given you are working with specialist 1, the probability of the requisition being entered incorrectly is 0 0.03. So given specialist 1, probability of incorrect is 0 0.03. Given specialist 2 is doing the entry, the probability of an incorrectly entered requisition is 0 0.04. So this is probability of incorrect given specialist 2. I'm going to do it one more time. This 0 0.03 is the probability of an incorrectly entered requ requisition given it was done by Specialist 3. In other words, it's probability of incorrect given Specialist 3. Notice how that differs from what we're being asked here. Let's focus on that last one for now because it's freshest in our memory. We're asked to calculate probability of Specialist 3 given incorrect. This is just the inverse of that. It's the probability of incorrect given Specialist 3. So this answer here is not 0 0.03. This answer here is not 0 0.04, and this one's not 0 0.03. The 3%, 4%, and 3% are the inverses of these. And when I say inverse, I don't mean one divided by. I just mean you're switching the position of the conditioning factor and what you're calculating the probability of. Bayes' law is very helpful in doing this. Now let's see Bayes' law in Excel. But before we get to Excel, 
let's see this written out a bit. So Bayes' law is just a way of switching the order of the conditional probabilities. It allows us to move from probability of B given A to the probability of A given B. In this particular example, it allows us to go between the probability of specialist 1 given incorrect and the probability of incorrect given specialist 1. All we have to do is know probability of A and the probability of B. Well, in this case, we're given the probability of incorrect given specialist 1. That's what we're given. This is what we're given. So B stands for error, and A stands for specialist 1. Now, if you read through the problem, and go ahead and pause right here, we are given the probability of specialist 1. The big question is, what's the probability of an error? just of an error, not an error given it was done by specialist 1, but the probability of an error in general. What is that probability of B? Well, in this example, it means it's the probability of an incorrect entry. Given, again, no additional information. So now we have to ask ourselves, how can an entry be incorrect? Well, it can be incorrect if specialist 1 does it, or if specialist 2 does it, or specialist 3 does it. So it's the probability of being incorrect by specialist 1 plus, remember or means plus in probabilities, probability of an, it being specialist 2 and an error plus probability of being specialist 3 and an error. How do we get the probability of specialist 1 and an error? That's just the probability of specialist 1 times the probability of an error given it was done by specialist 1. This was the definition of conditional probability given to you. Plus, the second one is the probability of it being an error done by specialist 2. It's the probability of specialist 2 times the probability it was an error given specialist 2. Probability of specialist 3 times the probability of an error given specialist 3. So probability of B, as it's written here, is just the probability of specialist 1 making the mistake, that is specialist 1 and an error, plus the probability of specialist 2 making a mistake, specialist 2 intersect error, plus the probability that specialist 3 makes a mistake. Specialist 3 makes the error, the intersection of specialist 3 and error. So all we have to do is substitute. We're given the probability of specialist 1, probability of specialist 2, probability of specialist 3. We're also given the conditional probability of errors given the individual specialists. Here they are. Probability of specialist 1 is 42%. Probability of an error given that was done by specialist 1 is 3%. Probability of specialist 2 is 39%. Probability of an error given it was done by specialist 2 is, 40, is 4%. And the probability of specialist 3 is 19%. And the probability of an error given it was done by 3 is 3%. The 42, 39, and 19 are given in the second sentence. 42%, specialist 1 process is 42%. And the 3%, 4%, 3% are given uh, in the second, third sentence. Portion of incorrectly entered requisitions by specialist 1, 3%, etc. Doing this calculation, we get probability of B is 0 0.0358. The probability of getting an error with no additional information. Now, hit pause for about 10 seconds. Process that. Hit play again. Welcome back. This is probability of an error given no additional information. This 3% is a probability of an error given additional information that it was specialist 1 who imp inputted the data. The 4% is probability of an error given it was specialist 2 that inputted the data. And this bottom 3% is the probability of an error given that it was specialist 3. And this 0 0.0358 
again, is the probability of an error given no additional information. Conditional probability, again, is a way of incorporating additional information in your probability estimates. So we got P of B, we got P of A's, you know what A and B are for the individual problems. So we want probability specialist 1 given incorrect. Specialist 1 will be A, B is incorrect, which we calculated way down here. That's B. Probability of A we get from the problem, 42%. We know probability of B given A from the problem, 3%, and now it's just plug and chug. Now let's see this in Excel. I may be able to create a formula that makes this a little bit easier. Well, let's find out. So here I've opened up Excel. I've actually put in some labels here. I just typed these in. So go ahead and pause while you type in these labels. Hello and welcome back. We're given this information from the problem, so let's go ahead and type that into the problem right now. And we're also given these prob three probabilities: the probability that specialist one and that there's an error given specialist one, etc. So these are from sentence uh, sentence two, and these are from sentence three. Probability of error we're not given, but we need it. And these three probabilities are the problems themselves. So what was the probability of the error? Well, this was just equal to the probability that Specialist 1 made the error, plus the probability that Specialist 2 made the error, plus the probability that Specialist 3 made the error. This first line is the probability that Specialist 1 makes the error. Second line is the probability that Specialist 2 makes the error. And this is the probability that Specialist 3 makes the error. So that's equal to the product of 0.03 times 0.42 plus 0.04 times 0.39 plus 0.03 times 0.19. And there's our probability of an error being made. Again, given no additional information. This is the probability of an error being made given Specialist 1 did it, again, etc. And so now we do the Bayes flip. This is what we need to calculate. This is what we're given. And this is the ratio. So specifically, calculating the probability of specialist 1 given that there was an error made, calculating the probability of specialist 1 given an error made is just the probability of an error made given specialist 1 times the probability of specialist 1 divided by the probability of an error made. This is equal to probability of an error given at specialist 1 times the probability at specialist 1 divided by that probability of an error. And there's your probability. Probability of specialist 2 given an error is just equal to the probability of an error given specialist 2 times the probability of specialist 2 divided by the probability of an error. And the probability of specialist 3 given an error is just equal to the probability of an error given specialist 3 times the probability of specialist 3 divided by the probability of an error. And those are the answers. Those go into these three spaces. Specialist 1 given incorrect. Specialist 1 given error is three cent round it to three decimal places. Let's make this easy on me. I'm going to highlight those. I'm going to click on this button, which reduces 
the number of decimal places. So rounding the answers to three decimal places, 372, 460, 168. And that's it. Bayes' Law takes a long time to do by hand if you're starting from scratch. But it does allow you to do something that you can't do otherwise. It allows you to change the order of conditional probability. And that's very important because quite frequently we need to calculate a conditional probability because we only know the flip of it. Here we know the probability of incorrect given specialist 1. That was 3%. But now that we know that there is an incorrect, uh, an error made, the probability that specialist 1 made the error is 37%. So this 3% is probability of error given specialist 1 did it. This is the probability of specialist 1 making that error. So these three numbers assume an error is made because they're conditioned on an error having been made. These three numbers don't assume an error may, is made. These are the probabilities of an error being made. They assume specialist 1 or specialist 2 or specialist 3. Here, we're looking at the probability of the specialist 1 having made the error given that the error was made. Now, what should these three numbers add up to? And why? They should add up to 1. And why? We're given an error was made. There's only three ways that an error could be made. It's that a specialist 1 made the error, a specialist 2 made the error, or a specialist 3 made the error. So given that an error was made, the sum of these three probabilities has to be 1. And that 1 is 100% because that correlates to or corresponds to the error that was made. Let me plop up this Microsoft Excel formula again. Make this a little bit wider. These three numbers were given to us in the problem. Again, my numbers may be different from yours. These three numbers were also given to us. We used what's called the law of total probability to calculate this number because it was not given to us. We had to calculate it. And that allowed us to use Bayes' law to calculate these three values. Again, the probability of an error is just the probability of specialist 1 making the error plus the probability of specialist 2 making it plus probability of specialist 3 making it, because there's only three specialists. The probability of specialist 1 making it is just the probability of specialist 1 times the probability of an error given specialist 1. The probability of specialist 2 making the error is probability of specialist 2 times the probability of an error given specialist 2. And the probability of specialist 3 making the error is just the probability of an error given specialist 3 times specialist 3. And what I just said comes from your textbook, page 169, the general multiplication rule towards the bottom. What we're calculating is probability of specialist 1 intersect error plus probability of specialist 2 intersect error plus probability of specialist 3 intersect error. Remember, in probability and in sets, and indicates both or an intersection. So this is the intersection of an error and specialist 3. It's just the probability of an error given specialist 3 times specialist 3. So here's the actual formula. Notice that it's split up as probability of error given specialist 1 times specialist 1 plus probability of error given specialist 2 times specialist 2 plus probability of error given specialist 3 times specialist 3. And now with probability of error known, you can do the Bayes' Law stuff. 
probability of specialist given error 1 is just the flip of this, probability of error given specialist 1, times the probability of specialist 1, it's that thing you're conditioning on, divided by the error. Similar for probability of specialist 2 given error and probability of specialist 3 given error. For the probability of specialist given 3 given error, it's just the probability of error given specialist 3 times the probability of specialist 3 divided by the probability of error. And I suggest you write what I just said down a few times so you can see the patterns that are coming out. And so that's it. This is Bayes' Law. It's extremely helpful, but unfortunately, it's mathematically intensive. Or is it? Because right now, if I discover, if I have a new problem, that 40% is done by Specialist 1, and 41% is done by Specialist 2, and 19% is done by Specialist 3, Excel updated all this information for me, and I've got the new probabilities already. If I'm given that 10% of all data entries done by Specialist 1, and 50% is now done by Specialist 2, and 40% is done by Specialist 3, all these probabilities have adjusted. So once we get this set up in an Excel worksheet, Excel takes care of the arithmetic for us. And that's the end for problem 5. Problem 5 was all about using Bayes' Law. Problem 1 was about conditional probability. Problem 5 used that conditional probability. Emphasis in problem 5 was on interpreting the problem in terms of probability statements, recognizing that you're given the probability of incorrect given the specialist number, and you need to calculate the flip of that. And Bayes' Law is all about calculating the flip. And so before we sign off completely, suppose you want me to submit this just to double check that I did this right. Actually, I forgot. It's 20 points. I mean, it's 4 points. Got them all right. So we connect once again. I always breathe a sigh of relief when it happens. Connect got it right. So take care of yourself. I hope everything is great. And don't forget to contact me if you've got questions. Goodbye.